Hey guys, this is Alan Fragman. And Miguel Campos. And Eric Tivierge. And I'm um, just going to show you guys uh, a quick uh, way of basically pushing around the particle, pushing around the point. Um, and, and this is an example that, of an effect you could do with this, for example. Yeah. Um, Looks like a big meatball. Yeah, it's a pulsating meatball. Yeah, it's a meatball that I will not eat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you probably shouldn't need this. If you see anything like this, you probably shouldn't need it. Yeah. Um, so uh, what's cool about this is it's it's been driven by some particles. If I hide the mesh, I have uh, a mesh that I'm emitting from, and I have some simple uh, sphere particles. They kind of going pretty fast, pulsating with a random noise. Nothing, nothing fancy. And then I. I have a piece of geo here, uh, which is a half sphere, actually, kind of has uh, actually a cube, a subdivided cube, not really a sphere. And then I subdivided that, and I have a the subdivided version, which is this. And uh, I have some an ice tree here with my yeah, basically it my is, effect. You use but, it here a semi sphere or you yeah. can use any 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 object. Yeah, you can use any use... any ob any object at all. Yeah, you take one as a as a base for emission and later uh, and duplicate it with more resolution, maybe. Then... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, this is one example of something abstract you can do with this, but uh, you might be doing some kind of alien or something like that, and it might be useful. Uh, it's also a great way to kind of get started with vectors because it's a very very surprisingly simple operation to do. And I'm going to guide you through doing it with a null, then with particles, and then we're going to see how we can do it with a curve, which is also a lot of fun. Very cool. So let's begin. OK, so let's think about the algorithm for a second. Uh, there, you, you're going to see a few things here in this null that I have. Uh, I'll explain them uh, right now. So first things first, the most important part of the algorithm, <laughs> kind of, is the fact uh, when am I going to affect this? Well, I'm going to affect it when it's within the radius that I know, because I know the size of the sphere, and I know the scale of it as well, over here. And right now it's one, so it's this value right here. So if my point is within this space, then it should be affected, otherwise it will remain the same. So that's the first part of the algorithms, and over here we have the within radius ice attribute is zero right now, and if I move this inside it will be one and once you're inside it you you're gonna know because we we know the bit of data of how how much the sphere how, how big the sphere is because we know the radius and of course the diameter is twice that um you know both sides and knowing where the position of the center is relative to this arbitrary point we can know that for example this is 0 0.71 units uh, 0.71 units close to this uh, this origin point and because of this because we know that the radius in this case is uh, oops uh, let's go actually it got it right here <laughs> I wasn't looking um, because the radius here is 1.692 and we are uh, 0 0.8561 close to, close to it we know that this minus this distance equals this distance over here, which is 0.83. And then we know that we must travel this much to reach the outside of the sphere. And that is basically the algorithm. Um, I have it turned down here, which is why it says final position over here. If I put it all the way up, it will be what you would expect. The only problem here, uh, just in this explanation, is that I can't get it to draw the, the vectors in here, like it would be. So it's really only kind of uh, accurate visually when it's kind of off. But you get the idea. So this this faint line, I don't even know if it appears in the video, but there's a faint cyan blue line kind of fades off. This is the representation of a point tra uh, vector trail in ice. Uh, it starts over here somewhere and it finishes here. And this vector is just the this position minus this one, and I get the distance. I was sorry, the, the, I get a vector, and from that vector has a length, and the length is the distance between these two points. And knowing that distance, I know that I have to travel the rest of the way. So that is basically it. And then you can see here, nice uh, kind of uh, debugging of our algorithm, and you can do this yourself and 
find out if your logic is correct. Say if we change the radius over here, turn it down, um, our math will adjust. Of course, the proximity is the same regardless of the scale, which uh, makes sense. Um, but of course, our radius it will change, so the end result is different. And that is basically it for that. Um, I'm I'm going to skip uh, handling rotations uh, because that's uh, much more complicated and it, it's going to confuse you. And uh, I want this to be a simple tutorial. So let's do this uh, for reals in in our um, grid, okay? And then we basically you will get this kind of uh, cool slidey effect. It's kind of neat. And of course, you can go all the way over and it will go inside. Oops, let me hide this debugging point cloud. There we go. So you can do this and then you could uh, add some kind of smoothing operation after that to get the edges to uh, kind of soften up a bit. But anyways, you get the idea. So let's do this thing. Let's build it. We have a grid here, simple grid and a null. It's a sphere Spherical null, uh, it's the shape rings, and I have some radius on it, let's say 1.5 to, to make the math uh, look a little more easier to follow. And let's get an ice tree. You open Alt 9 to get an ice tree, and you get this, and I'm going to show the side over here and put this under animation. Perfect. And of course, I'm going to need the left side as well. Probably will need the, the right. I'm going to hide that again. So. Uh, first things first, I need my null, so I'm going to select my null, press F3, drag it in, and I'm going to need my existing point position, always the essential when you're dealing with the formers, and of course, set point position, otherwise you nothing really will happen. And also important will be my position of, of this null, which I, will be the global position, so if I just copy and paste this get data and type in kini.global.pause, it will be uh, kinematics, global position, and I can get that. Um, and then I will want an if node, which I will just do I and then a question mark to match the single character. And this will uh, this will basically say, if, if we are within this radius, then go ahead and deform, otherwise do not do this. So I'm just gonna plug this in here. <clears throat> and Let's start. So uh, first things first, we need the vector for any given point relative to this. To do that, you subtract. When you subtract vectors, you, you get the difference. And uh, the difference is uh, the direction with the distance equal to the distance between those two vectors. So I get a point position, any given point on the mesh, and my uh, null. Also make sure your null is not scaled right now. We're gonna show you how to deal with that uh, later on, but for now we're gonna make it nice and simple. And you subtract the point position from, uh, sorry, um, I need some coffee. <laughs> so subtract the point position and, and subtract the, the null position, and this will give you the vector. And if you get the length of this, for example, let's make up a name here, self.tmp for temp. If we get the length of this vector and show that, and plug that in. Well, a lot of them. Let's um, make this a little easier. Actually, let's just use this the tagged features. The, the show values for tag components only, turn that on, and tag some nulls, make it easier. Uh, let's grab uh, this guy and this guy over here. So these dudes are that much far away from this null. You can see when I put it over here, it's almost zero, same for this. So this is how, how close you are. And from the null that we have, we can get the the radius, which in, which which is the um, the size of the null. So that's that's the null dot size, and I'm going to plug in the out into the end name, and 
as you, as the logic goes if my uh, my proximity is within is less than or equal to the total radius there we go less than or equal to so this less than or equal to their radius then we will do stuff otherwise we will not and you can see here let's say if i just plug it into true now any 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 point within this null will uh, go to zero 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 because that's that's what we have here and we're not doing anything but we'll we'll fix that so let's put this over here and uh, because we know the total radius all we need to know is the difference so we, again we get another subtract node and we subtract our radius minus our distance traveled and this is how much distance is left and because we already have our, our direction because it's essentially the same direction as the the point relative to that to that sphere we can just resize the existing vector so we go to resize vector give it our our vector from the subtraction and give it the difference here and of course you cannot plug this in right away because that's not gonna look right because it needs to be additive because you're doing a deformation you're dealing with the existing positions and then doing something on top of that so you will want to do an add i'm going to do ad question mark so i match only the add node and then i will plug this in like so and i'm going to plug my thing here and look at that that is it uh, really um, and we're gonna i'm going to show you how, how to make this better because for example now if you scale it or if you move it it's not going to be right but we're going to see that so let me get rid of this useless set data over here and that is basically it now we notice that when you scale the sphere uh oh nothing's going on but when it is still going on but the radius is incorrect now of course uh, the the size of the null does not actually change i mean the size value the the, the attribute of the size does not change but it is scaled, so we basically need to multiply this size by the scaling. And to do so, all you do is just to multiply. Simple as that. You get your existing size, and I'm going to copy and paste this and make my, get my... Uh, in this case, I'm going to go with one single axis just to make it a little easier. So can you global scale X? And I have to, I have to plug in my out name into my in name to get it to work and plug this over here whoops and there we go and this will be our new radius so i'm going to put this in here in the comparison where the other one used to be and i'm going to make sure that it's also where where the other one used to be down here in this the other subtraction node there we go so look at this now we can scale our null move it around and everything is good but there's still one more problem, which is that you, we have not dealt with the, the transformations of our grid. Right now our grid is in the center of the world, so it all is hunky-dory, but as soon as you move it, uh-oh, this is not right. So let's fix that. Now if you watch my video uh, with the ice gradient controller, you probably know what I'm about to do. If not, you should go watch it. It's a, it's a good video. Um, but first, let's finish this one. So you need to uh, do some uh, matrix multiplication. The matrix is a matrix uh, is a transform. A transform is just your SRT, your scaling, your rotation, rotation, and translation, all in one little package. And to to do the math, because ICE is really just working with the things in local space, it's not aware of aware of you moving it around unless you're dealing with locations, but that's another story. But in general, it, with just the raw data, it's always in local space, which is why it's not doing anything right now. So what we need to do, kind of, is like, sort of like moving the center back to the, to the point, to the center of the world. And you can see what happens here when I do that. If I move it over here and you're like, oh, this is wrong. If I go in here and touch the center by pressing the center mode and pretending to move it to the center of the world, um, Oops. Uh, actually, I didn't. That didn't behave quite like I like I expected it would. But 
actually no that, actually i take that back that's right the center is right here so essentially if i reset the center it will be correct now you doing that it would be kind of silly to to have to do that on the rig so you can do it directly in the math to do so you get you're going to multiply vector by matrix and you'll get a second one and you will also want to invert the matrix so you need an invert invert node for one of them and let's move this down here and we want to get another get data and we'll get the the uh, kini dot global of our null and we will also get the existing uh, current transform so i mean the the ones for this current objects which will be self dot kini dot global and actually uh i don't really need this one now that i think about it um i just need to get my my current self i need to invert it and i need to multiply my 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 affecting uh, position by this value by this matrix this inverted matrix and this will kind of reset this to the local space of this and now actually you don't need this extra one i made a little mistake there when explaining i'm sorry uh, and then when you move this around it's correct and if you move this around it is also correct and that is all you need to do to fix that and of course this this apparently <laughs> i thought this would get the scaling but apparently not so how do we solve that well let's let's give it a try with with the hey so i tried after a little while and i can't seem to get it so i'm gonna leave this for a follow-up video if i figure it out and if anyone else figures it out, then please show me. Uh, as an alternative for now, you can choose to deform points instead. That will always be okay. You could, you know, put this in a, um, a cluster with center, perhaps. Yeah, actually, yeah, sorry. They're right there. You just need to select your points. Right here. You use a cluster with center. That would be one way. And then your scaling is okay. You now just to use it as a deformation. Of course, rotating is perfectly fine. It's pretty neat. Um, and that is all. I hope you you learned something from this explanation. Um, you may not think that this is maybe the most useful kind of tool, but in fact, the logic behind it is the basis for a lot of other effects and just uh, kind of grasping the simple uh, vector subtraction and addition is uh, the basis for a lot of really, really, really cool things. Hey, so I've opened this scene here with a spicy meatball. And if I look inside, um, it's pretty much the same logic, I believe, um, as we had in another scene. Uh, we get the, the only difference here is that I'm getting the point clouds position by getting the closest points and because closest points even when you set the max number to one gives you an array regardless i have to get the select an array with an index zero just to pop in the uh i guess i'll just get a pop from array but whatever um just to grab the first item in the array so it's just one uh, and then of course i get my point position but then after that it's pretty much the same logic as if as if this was the null you get the size you get the point position you subtract the uh, current point position by the uh, the point of reference then you get the length of that is the length within the size then if so you find out by how much you've traveled so from the total you subtract the total traveled from the direction vector that we have we resize that direction by that new intensity and we add it back and uh, and then I just have a I have a filter here because I didn't use uh, an if node, mm. which is this is a diff different way to do it. Because I wanted to be able to blend, and uh, this way it was pretty easy. Ooh, so okay. well, you can you can use blend to to drive like a way map or something, drive at another null or create more yeah. compl complex uh, uh, deformation. Yeah, you can do something else.
Whereas the other one was more, uh, more harsh, I guess. This lets me blend it a little bit easier. Um, and that is basically it. Then I have a smooth, I think it's from the default factory nodes, I believe. Yeah, it's yeah. one of the newer ones, but yeah. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah, it's in there. Um, and that's basically it for this effect. And I still kept the subdivision up live so I can crank it up if I want to and uh, get more definition in my, my bubbles or grapes or whatever you want to call them, pulsating things. Um, and that is it for this. And I'll show you in a different video how to adapt this logic to work with a curve. Very Do you guys good. have any questions? I... Not for no? Moment. Thank you. How does the meatball taste? Yeah, that's spicy, I think. Uh -huh. um, yeah, so I'll show you guys in another video how you can extend this logic to to do what I, I call the sausage deformer, <laughs> which <laughs> okay. is when you have a, a so curve. I, 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 maybe I'm maybe it's because I haven't eaten dinner I'm, I'm that I'm, I'm making right I'm making yeah, all I'm these food hungry. references. Maybe that's the case. Uh -huh. But uh, yeah, I have a I call the sausage deformer, which is just the same logic on a curve, and you get these kind of sausagey things, and then you can still do the oscillation. And it's uh, you get these kind of flowing through a tube kind of effect. Ah, cool. It's pretty neat. Um, I'll show it to you in another video. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope this was educational. Thank you, Alan. Thanks, Alan. Bye. Bye-bye.